Hey, what's going on guys? Alex here with EJ, and we're bringing you your uh, weekly fishing report. Now, we got a lot of exciting things to talk about. Rock fishing to start off. Yes. It's coming back Tuesday, Tuesday. Yeah, September 1st. So we got rock fishing coming back up, and we have a lot of predictions and yes. exciting things, that you, uh, stuff that you guys can use for rock fish right now. Yep. So uh, remember, so it's still the same limit and stuff yep. like that. It's just, you know, we took a little break on there. Yep. Now, there's been a lot of people out there just seeing bigger size fish mm -hmm. moving throughout the area by catching them when they're fishing for mackerel and whatnot. I yes. uh, heard of a lot of range of fish between 20 and 26 inches on those schools of breaking fish. And there's a lot of ways to catch them, obviously. Yep. Uh, so, EJ, I know you have a couple little techniques and uh, areas where you like to catch them up in the rivers. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this is absolutely my <clears throat> most favorite time of the year to fish. And like Alex was saying, um, I do enjoy fishing in the rivers themselves. I see a lot of guys go mm -hmm. past me, um, and I'm catching really decent fish up in the rivers. Right. Um, and it'll only get better as we get um, deeper into the, the fall, fall and yep. the temperatures change. Um, a couple of things that I like to use is um, some of these old school bucktails. I love to troll in the river. Um, I'll pair these up with the swimming gulp mullets. And pretty excited about a couple of new, well, they're new to me anyway, colors. I typically use white or green chartreuse. Um, but now we have the gulp mullets with the yellow tails, giving yeah. a little bit more contrast. And All the about pink. the contrast. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and so, that sense, magic. It, I don't know what they put in this juice, man, but it's, uh, it's like fish it works. Crack it is, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. So what I'll do with this is, um, again, I'll trust my electronics. So I'm looking in the rivers. I'm looking for breaks for mm -hmm. points. Um, I'm looking at my depth finder to see fish in the, in the water column. Just if find I, it right. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. If I see them in the water column, I'm trolling right. and I'm trolling with spinning tackle. So uh, right. a 2,500 reel. So um, much fun. It is. It is. Um, maybe a six and a half to a seven foot rod. Um, and you mm -hmm. know you've got a fish. These right. fish are healthy. They're, they're aggressive and they fight. Um, yeah. So a lot of fun. Um, then if you're seeing fish on the bottom, mm -hmm. like, like almost like that false bottom thing that we talked about yeah, before, yeah. Um, don't be afraid to bounce these off the bottom. Right. Um, so hook them up. Let it go all the way down to the bottom. Just bounce it. Go with the tide and bounce it. Yep, exactly. And you will hook up. Um, the key here is to trust your electronics um, and have a plan A, B, and C. So right. you'll, you'll know your spots. Mm -hmm. You know, we talk about the mouths of the the, the, the rivers. rivers and whatnot. And yeah. Exactly. There's drop offs where the crab pots are a lot right. of times. And now with that, yeah. talking about spots, uh, besides inside the rivers, yep. uh, a couple of predictions here is that you know you're going to have. Uh, pretty much breaking fish throughout the area yep. uh, and we always talk about you know up north specifically for rockfish on north of the bridge tours yep. love point the patapsco hodges that's mainly where you're going to find mainly rockfish and some bluefish mixed yes. in there yes. uh, when you start in this middle section guys you're going to find a little more spanish mackerel if they're around yep. which they're still around in they here are. They are. Uh, you know and if you go more south you're going to start seeing more bluefish more spanish mackerel but once again, rock fishing uh, itself, uh, this is some stuff that you can use here. Spoonbrellas uh, for trolling uh, and then, you know, trolling wise around, let's say, Thomas Point to Bloody. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one thing. Upsize your spoon sizes uh, behind these or you can run them on planers. Uh, and like EJ said, just going back to the A, B, C and D plans, yep. um, that also goes back to tackle. Yep. Meaning you want to have some small spoons for bluefish and mackerel if you target them. And if not, you can go to rockfish and do that with the uh, bigger spoons now like i said right now i think rock fishing for prediction wise is going to be great all yep. throughout the area i don't think yep. there's going to be like one specific uh area where you're going to be finding them all around but obviously your typical areas and my prediction is probably going to be like love point yeah to a swan point yeah uh, that's been my typical like early fall late summer area where you can find fish and you can find them breaking jigging trolling all the good stuff Trying and then and true. right and then of course our safety net is jigging the uh, bay bridge pilot absolutely um the bay bridge always right. holds fish. structure structure overall remember right. guys exactly if you're not around the bay bridge area and you're down south uh, let's say thomas point structure wise the yep. actual lighthouse yep. some of those areas and believe me now if you're a little bit more south uh 
Live line is still going to be good. Yep. Yeah. The spot are still here. The yep. only thing is, as you move more south, you're going to be careful with those blue fish coming in there and snatching them up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You'll pull uh, a and head back. And right. That's all you'll have. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and now going into some of this perch fishing. That's yeah. Going yeah. On. So, so look, we, we still do have a couple of days where we can't mm -hmm. target rockfish. Right. So, so what do you do? And Alex mentioned the breaking fish, but there's still plenty of perch out there. Yeah. And the cool thing right now with the perch is they're in the rivers, they're, they're there, they're mm -hmm. hungry, so don't, don't be afraid to throw um, our perch pounders um, or little spinning baits, little met, met yeah. spoons and so forth. I like the small townies too, like the same thing, but exactly. on a tiny size. Exactly. Don't be afraid to throw those around the docks. Um, but, you know, if, if something like that doesn't work for you, they are starting to, to, to show up in the deeper waters yeah. too. So, like Alex mentioned, mm -hmm. seven foot knoll, six foot knoll. Um, look for them. Just find yeah. it. You got You got to trust your electronics. That that's the right. main thing. So, Padickery is another pilings. place. Bay Bridge pilings. They're there. They're always, always there. there. Um, they'll be there for quite some time. Especially when you have the kids and whatnot. You know, it's always or someone. It's one fish after fishing. another. It's so much fun. <laughs> it's, it's great. Believe me, I get days when uh, I can't find any rock fish and I just end up yep. perch fishing and I have a blast. Exactly. So now exactly. with that, let's saw, you know, the mackerel are still here. Yes. They yes. haven't gone anywhere. They're, you know, they're pelagic fish. They move around a lot. This whole week we'll see that you were on them or you were not. That's exactly right. You know, so the, I know you have reports of guys tearing them up. Yep. And I have reports of people catching nothing. Yep. So it was one of those things where, you know, what I've said is that most of the people that were trolling, if you got on them, you were tearing them up. Mm -hmm. If uh, for the guys I talked to, they were casting into schools of breaking mm -hmm. fish, it was really tough. Yep. It was one of those things where they ended up with just one or three mackerel. Yep. And then, you know, those fish are still here. They're still going to continue to be here. Uh, you know, they're mixing with bluefish, and it's a whole mix once you get to this area, bluefish, rockfish, and all of that. But like you said, once again, if you're not catching bluefish, I mean mackerel, right. you can catch bluefish and some of the uh, rockfish. Yeah, but the, the, the key here is you're going to catch fish. Yeah. And when when the breaking fish are there and you find them, you're catching that, that's something. the fun of it. Yeah. I mean, so I didn't get any mackerel, but I caught 15 bluefish, yeah. or, I, or I caught a bunch of small rockfish. That's still a lot of fun mm -hmm. to do. And if you have kids on the boat, and just the excitement of chasing those birds. Exactly. You know, it's, exactly. that's that's what it kind of you know. I've taken a couple of people out that have never done it before, yep. and they're like, "This is a workout." <laughs> because is, you know, you, you're sitting there and you're going from one school to the other, and there I'm like, "All right, put your rods down. We're going yep. over here," yep. and uh, you know, you're moving around, and it's exciting. It's it's a, it's, it's a new thing that you know a lot of people haven't experienced. Yes. And, and you know, it's an awesome thing. Like I said, cool. trolling for mackerel, your planers. Yep. Same thing that we've been speaking of, speaking of, and then your spoons, uh, like yep. your uh, metals and all that, yes. are going to continue to pretty much, you know, be good for mackerel. Uh, you know, like I said, if you, the more you move south, the more you're going to find mm -hmm. them. Uh, and, but it's fishing, you know, like we say, it's, it's fishing, <laughs> not catching, right? That's true. So that with that true. saying, uh, let, you know, let's jump into some of these uh, puppy drum. And, you know, everybody's been catching them throughout the area, lots of them. Cool. Especially down south up here. There's a few of them, but you're, you're still catching them Like I said, I have reports of more people and some of my personal friends catch them in the uh, Patapsco River Oh, uh, wow, so awesome. they're really far up in there cool. up there And like I mentioned before that we get like one good run every you know few gotcha. years yeah. You and, actually you know, got one on a, on a fly rod. Yeah, right? we got some on the fly rod and Very then cool. you know It's like I said, that's you know, I'm not an expert fly fisherman, but that's yeah. how many of their of them there is that's around cool. How do you so, catch these things? So well, we've got a couple things here guys uh, Just to show you guys and you can use this throughout the area here uh, Up north here and moving down south and this is some of the stuff I like to use uh, Right here. It's a twister tail that I like and that's I think like a three or four inch twister tail on a GI Jake uh, quarter ounce Put that on there and i always use some uh, yeah. sort of scent and this is my favorite one that i use for everything men hating pro cure yeah guys this is this is not a gimmick this really works yes um, you will outfish your buddy mm -hmm. who doesn't use um, this pro cure right this and is then great stuff. if i'm fishing down south of course i use that and then the popping cork okay? if i'm fishing down towards uh what i call the islands which is Blood, bloodsworth to smith island and all that 10 year area that's going to catch me a mix of, you know, everything pretty much. Cool. Reds, speckled trout, uh, rockfish down there. Gotcha. Uh, and, of course, if you want to go somewhere different, there's a lot of areas where you can go down there. Jane's Island, they have a state park there, Deal Island. Okay. Uh, you know, there's a lot of those areas where you can adventure and, you know, try some of these things. Uh, if you don't want to, you know, stay up here and you want to take a day trip or a two-day trip down there. How, how has the trout bike been? Trout been, uh, the trout has been okay. Uh, it's mainly going to be one of those things where you get there early in the morning okay. or you get a partly cloudy day mm -hmm. with some lower temperatures. Yep. 
and you'll find them same thing almost like rockfish uh you know points yep. uh grass points turn breaks cool uh you want to target them in those areas where you go anywhere from you know three four foot of water down to a drop off and they'll sit there and do you use similar type this setups? is what you're used this is okay. pretty much what i use 80 percent awesome. of the time when awesome. i'm targeting them throughout you know the grass flats and all that on the eastern shore now if you're in the western shore sometimes you might have to upsize your jig size to maybe uh you know half ounce okay. uh, jig just to get it a little bit deeper uh and some of these deeper uh drop offs but pretty much that's the only thing i use and of course like you just mentioned gulp I mean, yeah. you can use that for everything. Man, this and stuff for is trout, magic. It's one of those things that it, it's one of my go-to, uh, you know, things. Uh, besides that, uh, we what, also What's got, happening in Ocean City? Anything we got good? stuff in Ocean City, and I know a lot of guys, uh, you know, you guys have been going down there. Yep. And probably not fishing much, but there's some good stuff going on right now. Surf fishing, uh, shark fishing has okay. been incredibly good. good. Now, a couple little rigs like that, just a, you know, stout hook with some wire. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, in some cut bunker, that's going to be your ticket in the evenings and cool. nights uh, for some of those sandbars and some of those sand tigers. Now, remember, there's regulations on them where you don't take them out of the water, keep them in the water, okay. hook them, hook them, let them go, quick okay. picture, you know, all that good stuff. Gotcha. Now, besides that, we've got some sheep set, and this is where these guys come, uh, you know, into play, and that's your talk jigs. Where, but, uh, where are they getting the sheep's head? Sheep's head are uh, pretty much uh, Route 50 bridge. Okay. Uh, just dropping these guys straight down on the pilings. Inlet uh, and any kind of rock, like rocky areas. Yep. In it, pretty much in the back base or anything like that where there's semi-deep water. Yep. Uh, sand fleece on these guys. Uh, peeler crab or regular hard crabs. Awesome. Just cut them up into quarters. And like we mentioned before, you can probably even use them around here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. to put your soft crab or your uh, peeler crab in there around the pilings yeah. and work for rockfish or whatever swimming around. Yeah, I, I really like the design of these, um, especially for fishing around the pilings. Um, I've used similar designs, but I really like this one. It's got more color, has the actual mm -hmm. eyes on it. But when this thing hits the bottom, it's going to sit like this. Right. And as all of us know, we've lost many rigs around the bridge, and many jig heads. Mm -hmm. You tend to get hung up in that grass. Uh, whereas this would sort of flow across the right. top of that grass versus, you know, getting, you can pick up some sensitivity from that too. That, I guess. And that's yeah. awesome. Yep. And yep. you know, feel the bite a little bit better. Yep. And uh, let's talk about crabbing. Yeah. So crabbing's been excellent over the last week or so. Um, it's gotten better and better. Mm -hmm. And even um, the areas up north, like the gunpowder, nice. they're they're starting to yeah. see them. Which those guys struggled earlier in the season. Um, I, I may have mentioned earlier. Um, you know, when you would go out and you would be happy to get maybe two dozen or, or mm -hmm. three dozen crabs, guys are coming home with full packed bushels. Um, one of the interesting things though that I found from my contacts with crab is um, the crabs are a little smaller mm -hmm. up here, but they're really heavy. Um, and then the further south you yeah. get, you know, chop tank area and, and that scary. area, yeah, they're, they're, they're actually um, bigger, bigger crabs down there, So mm -hmm. which, is, which is interesting to right. me. But, the good news is, is there's a lot of little crabs too. Mm -hmm. So that means there's there's more coming. Right. So um, got, another another thing guys are doing is, um, you know, they're losing their bait a lot. Mm -hmm. um, the little crabs are eating them up. Um, but you know, that's that's a part of the game. Yeah. So one thing I would recommend as far as the, the depths are concerned, um, my pattern, if you know me, is I split my trout line in half and I go mm -hmm. a couple different, I'll go shallow, I'll go a little bit deeper. Um, that seems to work. Um, it's really hard to say exactly where to go, um, but try different depths, you know, especially right. if you have two, two trout lines that you can connect into one and see what's, what's Split hot. Split them up, yep. yeah. Yep. Yeah, but so. you know, crabbing's been good, uh, especially, you know, like EJ said, everywhere. So get out there and get your bushel of crabs. Absolutely. Have yeah. fun with the family. Eat them up. Yeah, a lot of people stop crabbing after after the holiday yeah. coming up, and really, and that's when the crabs get yeah. super super good. Yeah. I mean, they're they're fattening up for hibernation. And Remember, all it doesn't stop. In, yeah, it keeps <laughs> all the way going. up to October. Yeah, so a lot of people think that the season actually stops right when we hit the holiday. No, it does not. I've been steaming crabs on on Halloween. There you before, go. So yes, so you definitely. know what a better <laughs> thing to do than having crabs on Halloween. And that's all we got for this week, guys. Uh, send us your reports, uh, you know, your pictures and everything. And we'll hope to see you next week. Take care.